Okay, we're down here at Cliff's Welding. First up is the SMB fuel tank. And we're just getting ready right now to pump down the old fuel tank. This is a 60 gallon midship fuel tank made by SMB. Uh, Welcome to KYD. I love Cliff's Welding, but it's awfully hard to have a conversation with all that noise. So <laughs> Trish and I decided to come out here in the middle of nowhere out at BLM land and run through all of these upgrades, but we have a lot of stuff we wanna share with you. We wanna go through all the upgrades. We wanna do a quick truck review on the F-250. We wanna talk about some discount, a promo code that we are able to offer through Stage 3 Motorsports that we're pretty excited about. Trish, what else? I'm gonna go pull over right here. The day we decide to go back here is like a week after we sell the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, so let's find a place to park and we got lots to cover. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Welcome to my office. Is this your office? This is. This well, it's a bed rug now. It's nice and soft. Yes. It's comfy. This is my spot. Anyway, there's okay. a lot going on here. Mark's going to break it down. Well, this is our infamous install video that I know a lot of people have been waiting for. And it's not a traditional install, like a how-to install. Mm -hmm. We're going to be focusing on more what modifications did we add and why did we add them? What did we do differently now? If you've been following KW for a while, you know we've had an F-150, a 250, a 450, and then we're back to a 250. Yes. And so we've had Viera compressors, airlift compressors, and now we have an ARB compressor. Oh. There's some things we did a little bit differently with this truck, which is really cool. Can you guess what my favorite one is? I bet you can. <laughs> yes, Trish loves her 60 gallon midship fuel tank. And this time we did SNB, an SMB fuel tank, and I'll tell you why in a bit. But that's so that Trish doesn't have to ever stop. <laughs> I just keep on driving. <laughs> so before we dive into the video, I wanted to have a conversation here as to all the stuff that I think you should know before we get in. The last time we did a video like this, uh, a few people said, hey, it would have been really nice to see the price of the component or the, the I can part. I see that. Mm -hmm. yeah, with the labor. Yeah, right. And so um, Cliffs, which is where we got this installed, and I paid retail for all the install. Mm -hmm. uh, I got, I've, I have the invoice here so we can list, itemize each of the labor costs associated to like the labor of all this stuff. And I'll tell you this, some of the stuff I wish we would have done ourselves, but we did it all at once and I was recording it. So it's not like I can say, okay, do that, but I'll do this and you do that and I'll do this. Okay. So there's that. And then the other thing is, and this is pretty cool. So you've probably heard of Stage 3 Motorsports. They are a killer Ford and Toyota, but Ford website. Mm -hmm. It's a killer site. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking, so they provided a lot of the, well, all the parts that in this video, they provided. But we got to talking about creating a promo code up to 10% discount for the KYD community. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, it was not easy to get. You, if, you, if you're familiar with Stage 3, you see they don't throw out promo codes very often. And the reason is all this stuff is heavy right. and they provide free shipping. And so cool. they said, we'll do it through the end of June. Yes. So it's up to 10%. So it's different amounts on different products. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Through the end, like just for, well, through the end of June. Now, if you're watching this video and it's after June, go to keeperdaydream.com, hop on our email list. And if we ever do anything with them again, mm -hmm. that's where we'll send out promo codes. Mm -hmm but we're pretty excited about that because these parts are awesome. It's a great site. Uh, so anyway, now I wanna talk about what we have going on. Let's start from the front. So we installed a 60 gallon midship SMB fuel tank. Trisha's favorite. Let's talk about the air. Underneath all here, which we'll get into when we get into the install, is an ARB compressor. I've never had an ARB compressor, but this is kind of like aftermath of our short stint in overlanding. Okay. All the Jeepers and overlanders, they all use ARB. Mm -hmm. And it's because they have big 35, 37, 40 inch tires and it pumps a ton of air. Fast, it's all about speed. It's crazy fast. Yeah. And so I've had the Viera and I've had the airlift. I wanted to see what the Air ARB can do. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a onboard tank with 100, it's 150 PSI. I'm going like this because I have a quick disconnect that comes out the bumper. 
and then which that's is super fun. Like if you ever wanted to have a tailgate conversation, <laughs> have a <laughs> yes. quick disconnect yes. out of your bumper or somewhere, yes. right? Because yes. that's super fun. And then uh, I still need to install this, and the reason it's not installed yet is because I have to get some custom brackets made because it has to go in a very specific spot. Direct it away from us. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, so, and then I have air lift airbags on the back here. Um, so let's see on ARB compressor, quick disconnect, airlift bags, and then the bed, as you can see. This is unbelievable. So we've got a bed slide right here, which we'll show you in a little bit. A backflip. This is my third backflip, and I'll tell you the pros and cons of a backflip when we get into it. And then we did a bed rug. We've always had like Line X or Rhino. This is the first bed rug we've used, mm -hmm. and we only did it because of the bed slide and the backflip. So far, we're loving it. Yes. But there's pros and cons to this too that I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so with all that being said, let's first start with getting this fuel tank installed and then we'll meet you back here and we'll do a walk around everything. Nice. First tip when you're doing a fuel tank swap, do not show up with a bunch of fuel. That was me. Last time we did this install at Cliffs, I wasn't thinking day before. I feel up, I probably show up here with like three quarters of a tank. And I could see the look on Jake's face. That's who did the install last time. And he looked at me like, really? So this time, I planned it just right where I have 50 miles to empty. So maybe it's just a couple gallons in there or something like that. So. Got the old tank out, set down the OEM tank next to the SMB tank. That tank is a beast, the difference in size. But what I really like about what SMB did is they used the existing OEM shape so that you could put the skid plate back on and you put the water separator in the same spot and then they kind of went around that spot to get some additional fuel up front. But I like how, I like how that was designed. Plus, it has some splash, I don't know, like baffles in a way so the the fuel isn't splashing back and forth, keeping it compartmentalized, which is good. Now that that tank is out, we're gonna move over the, the, the fuel pump and the water separator, put the hose neck line back in, and then, I guess, fill up, and that'll check off that. Okay, so now we're in the cab of the truck here, and I went to SMB Tank created a video on how to update the miles to empty, so changing in the computer, changing it from 30 gallons to 60 gallons. Uh, other stuff I want to mention about SMB, I, I really like that it has baffles, which I mentioned. Uh, I like all the technology that goes into the tank. I like that it's plastic, so it's a little bit lighter. I think the thing we like the most about upgrading our tank to 60 gallons, which is just pure luxury, I mean, it's not essential but it's a really nice thing to have when you're towing because we're only getting 13 miles of the gallon and having that extra fuel range means that we, gotta, we have to go to get fuel less often. Trish just likes to drive and drive and drive, so she, she's all into the big gas tank. It's something that we got when we went to Alaska, but we found out that it was one of our favorite upgrades. Okay, so I'm gonna get this computer upgraded uh, or updated, and then uh, let's now talk a little bit about the air. So this is where I keep my Viair. Little pup, love this thing and I think like 50 feet of cord, like this. Oh, but hold on, let's grab this one because this has this, has this little air thing on the end. This is also where I keep my, my uh, 60 degree Titleist rusted wedge because I think we mentioned last video that Harvest Host now has golf courses, so I'm excited to go stay at one. All right, so let's start with this quick disconnect. So the last time we added a quick disconnect in the bumper, we welded a little plate down by the towing uh, hitch and we went to Alaska and it just got hammered to the point where I could hardly even operate it anymore. So this time I wanted to put it up above this area so no mud and stuff got into it. There is a metal plate behind here. So we drilled a hole into that, into that metal plate and there was just enough threading to make this, to make this work. So. We'll just put this here for right now, and then we'll get the air plugged in here. Get it cranking. Get it cranking.
Airbags are going in now. Now, one of the reasons that I went with air is because I wanted to have an onboard compressor anyway, just so I could fill the trailer tires and operate the airborne, which we'll eventually get to. But as long as I'm gonna have an onboard compressor and a tank, I thought I might as well have the airbags. It does make the ride a bit softer when you're riding on air versus the leaf springs when you're under load. And then it also gives you the added benefit of, of just leveling things out. Now the Airstream has such a light tongue weight anyway, it wasn't critical, it wasn't essential. But as long as I was going through all the effort and I'm gonna have this truck for a long time, I thought I might as well just add the bags on with the rest of the air system. So that was kind of thinking behind there. Side where this is gonna go. This Air B compressor is a beast. It has an internal regulator about 150 psi, and they found a pretty good place to mount it up underneath. So it's gonna go up above the spare tire. And Mike's right now making a bracket that we're gonna bolt into the sides of the frames. That way, the compressor ever has an issue, we gotta replace it. Then they can take the side bolts out and then it all, all comes out. So this is gonna go in between those frames up there and then the tank is gonna go forward of the spare tire. Once we get the compressor mounted and the tank mounted, then we can run the lines into the air bags and then we can run electric all the way up to the up fitter switches and the batteries. And then maybe at the time, I'd like to maybe pre-wire the horn even though I need a solenoid, like an air solenoid, we can pre-wire it back here so that it'll just be easier to handle later. Still gonna be able to get a screw in that thing. That's true. So if I didn't have the up there switches, then these wires here would have to go to a switch that we would install inside. It'd be a much bigger oh, situation. Yeah. No, I, It'd be about as complicated as Mike putting uh, the location of the switch that I want. <laughs> you should have seen how thrilled he was when I told him where I wanted. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, let's talk about the air system. So in here is where the airlift switches for me to add air to the bags. I think this is a great spot for this switch because this compartment is pretty much only used for registration and miscellaneous things anyway. And sometimes when it's in the middle console, it kind of gets hard to actually see the gauge. So if I could just lift the switch right here, you can't feel it, but the back end just went up. So I just added 20, 30, 30 pounds of air. That's 40 pounds of air. And then when I release the air, it just uh, actually goes right right out behind here. Okay, so this is the switch for the airbags. The reason I did airlift bags is because they have a, a bumper inside the bag. So I don't have to keep a little bit of air in there to prevent the bag from getting damaged. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, this is where, as an RVer, you spend most of your time in the bed of the truck. So, I'm excited to share with you some of the stuff we've done back here. Uh, and some of the pros and cons to this backflip. But, I suppose the thing I'm most excited about is accessing everything. So, one of the things that I did with this bed slide is I put in a 5 foot slide, which is a short bed slide. And that gave me 16 inches in front of the slide to put fresh water, diesel, gas, our ferment generator, and propane. I'll show you that in just a second. But I was concerned that with the bed slide and losing this four and a half inches, that I would not be able to fit this container. And if I wasn't gonna be able to fit these containers, I was really questioning if I wanted to do it at all. This is where we keep like our fresh water hoses, 
I got a bin for tools. Uh, we keep our back black stone right here, and then something that's new that we're pretty excited this season is to be smoking as we go across the country. So uh, let me just crawl up in here so I can show you. We got 49 and a half. How wide are the mounting holes side to side? Say 22 and a half on center. decided to re-record this segment because when we were out in the forest doing this video I forgot to cover some of the deficiencies of this setup and the pros and cons and let's face it when it comes to review of items some of the drawbacks are the most important part so let's start with the backflip I don't know if you can tell yeah you can tell you can see the fifth wheel cameras up here and the reason you can see that is because this is a standard bed 6.7 foot bed and as a result these panels are a little bit thinner and as a result of that it comes up and you can see your fifth wheel camera can still see the back. When we had an F450 and it was a long bed, these panels were longer. And there were two deficiencies to the backflip when we did that. One is the panels were bigger and they were heavier. And when you're towing with a fifth wheel, you keep it in this position like this. And these panels would dig into each other and they would actually leave marks on the top of the panel. That's not that big of a deal, but the bigger deficiency is it covered up the camera. So, over time, I just got used to hooking up with the with the headrest, centering the headrest. So if I were to do a fifth wheel, I'm sorry, if I had a long bed again, I would do a sliding bed cover, and I wouldn't go with this. But now that we're back in a uh, standard bed, I love the backflip. I like that it's nice and clean. It's 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 smooth on the top. A lot of people wrote in, and there's some really cool like industrial strength. Tonto covers where you put bike racks and tools and walk on top and that's cool But I just like I like the the clean Look of an of a, a backflip mx4. Okay, so let's talk about the Deficiency of a bed slide now. I've we, we've really enjoyed having the bed slide and But the drawback is of course I did the short I did the short bed five foot bed slide and that left me 16 inches right up here 16 inches to where the bed slide goes so I can fit these containers in propane. But the drawback is that, and by the way, you notice the use of the Stanley Flat Max can teach an old dog new tricks. So that's a great tape. Anyway, so I've got this uh, Furman generator. It's a 2100 watt generator. And the reason I got it is because it's only nine inches wide. And so it fits perfectly right here. The generator I wanted was the Furman 3300 watt hybrid, which runs off of propane or gas. But that generator was 18 inches wide, so I couldn't fit it here. So here's where you have to start making some decisions, and I'll tell you the decisions that I made. The 3300 watt generator is what I would prefer, but I'm gonna use it maybe once, twice a month. I think it's essential for RVing, but I'm gonna use it very seldomly. The bed slide, on the other hand, is something I'm gonna use every day. So I figured I'm gonna be, I'm gonna prioritize the bed slide of everyday use over the generator, which is just gonna get once or twice a month use. But you know what, if you're dry camping a lot, then you might keep that in mind. But at the same time, if you're dry camping a lot, you might wanna go with a, a truck cap. And I think a lot of people are wondering why we didn't do a truck cap. Um, the fact is we just like the look of a truck. Uh, Caleb and Trish were out on a truck cap, but it would it would give us a lot more space. And I think a truck cap in conjunction with a bed slide, I probably would have done the bed slide all the way up to the to the wall here with a truck cap, and then we put taller items here. So that's definitely definitely the way to go. But I do like being able to see out the back window. Yes, it's nice. And Trish and Caleb were kind of out on the truck cap, but because because of the back window and because for video, I like light in here. I was on board with just dealing with some of the deficiencies of the back foot. Yes. Well, we kind of wanted to have our bikes in there and covered, but then we yeah. thought, well, if we could figure that out, then we can have a flat back again. We did order a bike rack for the Airstream, mm -hmm. so that's kind of cool. And uh, hopefully we get that installed before we go. Speaking before we go, we're headed to Home Depot now because we just have a few little minor things we want to fix up to the cabin. Uh -huh. And then we are hitting the road for seven months. I can't believe it. Nova Scotia bound. 
hopefully we're going to remain flexible we are but that is our hope that we get to make our way up there yeah a couple other things i wanted to mention on this video the backflip and the bed rug i would have installed myself it's a very simple install in fact carson and i installed the bed flat the backflip on the f450 yeah with just a socket wrench very simple but like i said in the beginning of the video it's not like i could you know everything just had to be done at once right um let's see oh and then i also wanted to mention that as fun as all these upgrades are and they are they really fun. are sometimes they they offer performance and safety and convenience but mostly convenience and mostly just being fun yes no matter where you are what truck you have don't let truck upgrades or what you have right now stop you from getting out there and getting started don't let anything slow you down nothing what you have right now whether it's a tent yes <laughs> anything just do it anything just to get it. out there and just go carve out some weekends yes because once you get going then you'll start making these improvements mm -hmm. start with where you are and then slowly make improvements and you will cover so much ground so much faster you'll be surprised but at the same time if you're ready to make these upgrades and you've been eyeballing something take advantage of the stage three motorsports promo code is kyd really, honestly they do not do this normally we were, yeah, and we're able thrilled to we're able to offer that so uh just three more videos before we can start going back to making travel videos again <laughs> so i know uh a lot of this is usually when people are like i like your travel videos better it's like look we do too we okay do too. but um you know we got some more how-to stuff and then we'll hit yes. the road uh, oh. just a few more days for these awesome yeah. shirts keep your daydreams and remember dollar from every single shirt sweatshirt yes. tank top that is sold goes to a um scholarship yeah. for kids to go to summer camp so very yeah. exciting and people are digging the hoodies yeah. so am i this is yeah. my hoodie it's cozy so don't wait on that because we're going to keep your, our eyes out for you this summer in your summer remember shirt so that's it for this video we're glad you're here and we'll catch you next sunday bye plug this into the OBD2 port under the dash and after we plug it in we're going to go onto our computer it has to be a PC computer click on the Forescan app that you downloaded